Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 6. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cashflow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Welcome back. Glad you're here. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you've listened to the pilot episode to understand how the episode in this show works. Uh, but most importantly, take advantage of our complimentary course, Cashflow Foundation. It's part of our cash flow creation system. People want to know, how do you create a personal cash flow pipeline? How Could you imagine having literally a cash flow pipeline that comes to your door, cash that comes to your door all the time, and we teach you how to make it step one in our introductory course, Cashflow Foundation. Uh, all you got to do is just go over to the website, cashflowdiary.com, uh, put your email in the box, and you can get your first lesson planned within minutes. Anyway, on this particular episode, I've got uh, something that I think is very, very important to talk to you about. As you know, uh, the title is How to Lose Money and How to Earn Money. And I did that in that order on purpose, and we'll definitely talk about why. Before we go there, let's talk about the cash flow quote for this particular episode. It comes to us from a source that uh, you may find unlikely. I like it, though. It, here it is. It says, it is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you have failed by default. I like that. It actually comes from uh, J.K. Rowling. Uh, she's a British novelist, and if you haven't heard of her, uh, you probably have heard of Harry Potter. And that's one of the things that I find interesting about this is that I'm not necessarily a Harry Potter fan, uh, although I, I do have a daughter who definitely was. Um, the Potter books, though, gained world worldwide attention, won multiple awards and sold more than 400 million copies. And they are now the best selling book series in history. Best selling book series in history. And it is currently the highest grossing film series in history. Could you imagine if J.K. was too afraid to make a mistake? Would we have Harry Potter? Now, some of you listening, you're probably, you know, Harry Potter fans, uh, but I think you're getting the point. The point is, is that some success is on the other side of failure, and that's definitely what we're going to be talking uh, a lot about on this particular episode. Before we go there, I uh, just wanted to bring something I thought was also interesting to your attention. I don't know if you saw this article in the news. It was by Drake Bayer of FastCompany.com. Uh, the title alone is, an, is I think, you know, intriguing. It says why salary shouldn't be the biggest factor in career choice. Uh, I know that many of us uh, love cash flow. We love the idea of real estate and business for the cash flow or using various other devices to generate cash flow. The question is, though, is what is the biggest factor? You know, or is that what attracted you to the industry in the first place? And we'll be doing episodes in the future that'll show you just literally how. Uh, it doesn't really matter what part of real estate you want to get into. It's not like one part is the secret super part that makes all the money and the others don't. Uh, we'll definitely be covering that in the not-too-distant future. So stay, stay tuned for that. Look up the article because it talks about how people you know, of differing salaries still have the same issues. I mean, you could live in these high-dollar neighborhoods but still have the same issues as uh, – you know, because now instead of comparing, you know, whose salary, you're comparing who has the biggest airplane hanger. I thought that was very, very funny uh, because, you know, that definitely, definitely does happen. Anyway, let's talk about it. So we're going to tackle this topic of how to lose money and how to earn money, uh, because I know those are things that, uh, you know, I'm always concerned about. And I know that those are things that you're concerned about. So it, let's let's take it down very simply, how to lose money, how to lose money. This, I'm going to tell you how to lose money. You're like, why am I listening to this? You're because you don't want to lose money. That's why you're listening to it. But this is how you lose money. 
you lose money by making a mistake. And what is a mistake? It's simply an action or judgment that is misguided or wrong. Well, now, making a mistake isn't necessarily the entire picture, but let's explore this process of losing money and making mistakes. See, it's what happens after you make the mistake that creates the true problem. So, so many people, after they make a mistake, they what quit, right? They just stop working. They give up on the idea. Oh, my God, it's too hard. Real estate doesn't work. I, I knew I couldn't do it. it it's, just, it's just more than I could handle. And then they quit. Well, what is the effect of quitting? How many times has quitting ever gotten you any closer to what it is that you were looking for? Yes, you've made a mistake. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it didn't go well. All of those things. Yes, your friends laughed. Yes, you felt bad. Yes, you had to apologize, but did quitting ever move you forward? I don't think so. Well, here, here's another one, how to lose money. Well, one of the other mistakes that goes in this particular category is waiting until you have it all figured out before starting. This one costs us probably the most. This is by far the most expensive price most of us have paid many, many times over, and it's simply called opportunity cost. You know, so here's another way of looking at it. Let's pretend for a second, you know, you needed to go to the store, maybe to pick up, you know, some bananas or some groceries, or you were going to go to the movies and you were going to meet your friends, whatever. You have the goal. The goal is simply to get to the store. But for some reason, you say, you know what? I'm not going to get to the store. In fact, I'm not even going to get in my car until I have my keys until I've gone on Google Maps and, and I've, I've got an exact map until, and in fact, I'm gonna go one step further and make sure that all the lights are green before I actually get in the car and go. If you had to do all of those things, would you ever get to the store? Would you ever actually catch up with your friends at the movies? The, I'm guessing that you probably would not. So, opportunity cost. It's probably the biggest expense that we're all paying. And it's the number one way to lose money. Why? Because you, you can't earn a dollar on anything that you're not actually out there trying to do or create value with. How much money do you earn on missing out on the next you know, IPO or the next dividend paying stock or the next real estate or business opportunity? How, how much money do you earn just by looking at it and wondering about it and waiting till you understand it completely? That's a really, really big expense. And for some of us, depending on your age or how many opportunities have come across your desk, that could be a very, very large number. Uh, I know that there was a time I remember a business partner of mine, um, he had asked me to, you know, uh, pretty much fund this deal and we were going to work it together and it was exciting. And uh, I, uh, being the <laughs> astute person that I was, said, no, no. I'm not going to do it. And I remember because at that time, the uh, the investment was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $16,000, and I chose not to make the investment. Um, and he found someone else, to, another way to do it anyway. And here's the interesting part. He went and did it anyway. I didn't understand it. I didn't want to figure it all. I said, I got to wait until I understand it more, all this other stuff. Go ahead. I figured what I was doing was better. Long story short, he went on to make literally over a million dollars, half of which would have been mine, over a million dollars. See, oftentimes when we don't take advantage of opportunity cost, we can only guess at what might have happened. <laughs> In this particular case, I was gifted the pleasure of knowing how much that decision cost me. And it was amazing to go back and just to think about the number of dollars that, you know, myself and my family, we did not get to take advantage of because we wanted to, I wanted to figure it all out beforehand. Opportunity cost, it's huge, it's huge. Um, another one uh, when it comes to losing money is being afraid of failing or feeling embarrassed, you know. Uh, it's something that I often say is like, you know, just because you're afraid, that's not an excuse for not trying. Just because you've never done it, that doesn't mean you you don't make an attempt. Uh, the whole point of being an entrepreneur is, uh, to a degree is to develop the resources as you go. We're developing the very solutions to the problems that don't, I mean, problems are already in existence. And what our job is to go out and do, to do is to solve them. We solve them using the tools that we've got. 
And sometimes the tools that we have aren't satisfactory to the actual level of the problem that it is that we're able to solve. Therefore, we have to come up with new tools. That's the whole point. Uh, could you imagine if, you know, someone said, oh, well, I, I guess I just can't get drive to California. I can't get to California fast enough, so I'm just going to sit at home. And if they were living in, say, in Massachusetts a long time ago, and they had to travel across the country, and they just said, you know what, I can't get there. I'm just not going to go. I mean, yes, we started out by walking and then and having the covered wagons and then eventually roads and all these other things. Those were all things that are were invented. These concepts were were created to solve a problem. And one of the things that we must always remember is this. It was taught to me a long time ago, and I still remember it, is that all problems, <laughs> all problems accrue interest and grow larger over time, which is interesting when you start thinking about, you know, uh, national deficits and debts and things that we may not want to be taken care of at the moment. All problems accrue interest and grow larger over time. But one of the most important things to understand about you know, being afraid or feeling embarrassed is that it is impossible to do two things at the same time. You cannot learn something new, especially if you've never done it, learn something new, and especially if no one's ever done it, and look good at the same time. You, it's not possible. It's not, you just can't do it. Right now, my son, he's uh, two years old, and what's interesting is that, you know, not too long ago, he was still in the learning how to walk phase. Well, many people would agree, myself included, that walking is something of a necessary component for life, okay? So it's an activity for daily living. Uh, could you imagine if my son just decided to say, you know what, until I figured out how to look good, I'm not going to take a step. Would he ever learn to walk? And more importantly, would I, as his father, accept that? Should I? No, your friend shouldn't accept the fact that you may be making the excuses. Your persons who are in your life, your accountability partners and coaches, etc. It's okay to have weaknesses. It's okay to stumble and fall and fail. What's not okay is to stay that way and stay weak. So keep that in mind because these things are activities that are required for you to become better uh, at business in many different ways. Excellent. So before we get to the earning money piece, I just want to review what uh, the question was from last time. Uh, just wondering to see if who was out there and who was listening and making sure that you got it. So uh, here is was last week's cash flow question. It was simply, uh, what is the term many real estate investors use when describing their mortgage payment? What is the term many real estate investors use when describing their mortgage payment? The answer was debt service. See, you no longer have a mortgage payment. You don't pay a note. You have debt service. It makes you feel all sophisticated now that you call it debt service. So there you go. Hopefully uh, that has increased your financial intelligence just a little bit. So here's the next question I want you to look up. Feel free to answer and grow. Uh, what do the letters I, R, R mean when it comes to investing? I didn't spell that wrong. That doesn't really, it's not really a word. It's not called er. So it's like, what do the letters I R R mean in investing. Have fun looking that up. I know that you will grow. Uh, it's a lot of math. Uh, for some of you know what I mean already, but this is good. Look it up. I think you'll enjoy understanding that. And then most importantly, teach someone else. Okay, so let's now talk about how to earn some money uh, when it comes to you know business and real estate. Well, here's the funny thing. In order to earn money, you know, the number one ingredient, what you must do is you must <laughs> make mistakes. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love this. Both uh, losing and earning money require the same thing, making a mistake. See, here's the point. You, you don't know where a mistake may lead. Think about this particular person from history, Thomas Edison. He made lots of mistakes. That's right. The famous you know, Thomas Edison, when it comes to the light bulb, he looked at it a little differently, right? He said simply, I, I found a thousand ways not to do it or 10,000 ways not to do it. That didn't work. That he was making progress. One of the things that we, I, I like to always try to remind myself is that making progress is, is not, is more important than actually getting to the goal uh, right now at this exact moment. Did we make progress today? If I made progress, then therefore it was a successful day. Keep that in mind. 
And here's some non-conventional mistakes that you might not have thought of. In fact, you may want to pick up this book. It's uh, Mistakes That Work by Charlotte Jones. It's an old book. It's about 20 years or so old uh, now. I think it was printed originally in 1991. Uh, So you may have missed this one. (laughs) It definitely didn't come across your Facebook feed uh, recently, but here you go. Uh, if If you think about it, Uh, A mistake is just simply sometimes things that we did not intend to do. And as I said, you don't know where a mistake may lead. So let's think about the character of Cinderella. Cinderella, we all know the story to a degree, right? But as she's leaving the ball, what happened? She dropped her glass slipper. She left it behind. So let's think about this. Did she mean to leave her glass slipper behind? The answer is, of course, no. That, That wasn't her intent, but she did. Now, in leaving her glass slipper behind, what happened? The prince suddenly said, wow, I've got to find the person who left this glass slipper. So let's examine for a second. What happens if she had performed perfectly? She'd probably still be cleaning the fireplace or chimney or mopping the floor, right? She would have never gotten to her happily ever after, simply because she left the slipper. Now, and here's another little interesting fact. We know the slipper to be a glass slipper. Well, it turns out that that was also uh, a mistake as well. And the translation from the original story from French, the word for fur and the word for glass sound very similar. Therefore, what was originally a fur slipper is now a glass slipper. Either way it goes, I bet you Cinderella is glad she made a mistake. That mistake leads to something. Secondly, let's think about this. You got to realize that your mistakes have value. Mistakes have value. They have a different value. And I alluded to this earlier. Sometimes the value is progress. And that progress can be defined in many different ways. Uh, Many of you know, especially if you've seen me (laughs) recently anywhere, uh, I've been talking about photography a lot. It's something that I have fun with. And uh, it's one of those things that I, I just continually enjoy. So let's Understand that when you're learning photography, especially at the beginning, your camera probably knows how to do its job better than you do, and you make tons of mistakes, tons of mistakes, but you're learning, and that learning is representative of progress, as I said earlier. So reframing your mindset and paradigm around mistakes and what they mean is is very, very important. And then the next piece when it comes to making mistakes under earning money is that here, here's the key, and I, I think if, if you grab this one, you'll go make more mistakes. I often tell people to go fail, fail forward, fail fast, fail often as you possibly can. Because, see, what makes some people very, very valuable in the marketplace, what can make you valuable right now is for you to be willing to make the mistake and then, more importantly, market your new valuable experience, right? What was once a mistake as a result of bad judgments, becomes experience. And now that you have experience, you now are able to make better judgments. What what I mean by this is individuals who made things like the drink that we properly know as Coca-Cola were made inadvertently. Chocolate chip cookies were made inadvertently. The person who was trying to make uh, a chocolate cookie put chunks in it thinking that they were going to melt in the oven. They didn't melt, and what came out was chocolate chip cookies or what we know as chocolate chip cookies. Some of you may be very addicted to the yellow sticky notes, right? Well, again, yellow sticky notes weren't exactly what they were trying to create. In fact, they, the part of the problem with yellow sticky notes is that the glue was too weak for its intended use, and they were dissatisfied with that. But now, obviously, turning that mistake and learning to market that mistake has resulted in, well, can we safely say millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in products? Because uh, how many of us know that, you know, of those yellow sticky notes that are now comes in various different colors and sizes and you, and some of us can't even live without them? And, and what about Scotchgard? That wasn't intended either. You know, it, it actually came from an accident because they spilled what became Scotchgard on their tennis shoes. And then it took a number of years to realize that even though the tennis shoes wore out, the spot where the Scotchgard material fell was still in a pristine condition. It's crazy but the point is is be willing to make mistakes see learning the real estate game isn't something like i said you can't learn and look good 
at the same time. So one of the strategies to mitigate that risk of your lack of experience, i.e. having made no mistakes yet, is simply the fact that you maybe you start a little bit smaller. Maybe you start a little bit closer to home. Maybe you start with something that, you know, where you go, wow, okay, I'm doing this for experience. One of the things that I think is the most important to understand is that you do your first deal for experience, not profit. Uh, yes, I want you to earn some money, but that's not the most important piece. The most important piece is the experience of having done the deal in the first place, and then you market that experience over and over and over again so that you have the ability to say, hey, this is what I know how to do, and these are the things that I know how to handle. Because in so many situations, uh, the reason uh, individuals are willing to buy property from you, or are willing to do business with you, or are willing to uh, let you use their money and or be able to, you know, perform and, and let you lead transactions is simply because you you have the experience, you have already experienced how to handle your emotions and how to act in certain situations that they know are likely to happen. Remember, the goal is to protect the investment and then earn a return in that order. So hopefully that gives you an idea and changes a little bit of your perspective on how to lose and earn money and specifically as it relates to mistakes. And as a final comment, be aware of this. Be mindful of where you get your information. Is it from a person or entity or organization that has the same values as you? See, one of the things that we must be aware of is that our school system currently uses its authority uh, to make it quite difficult for a person to become comfortable making mistakes. We reward perfection. We, we make too many of the mistakes inside of our school system and you get a label. Maybe it was slow or difficult or you get to ride a different bus, you get held back or you're, you're called a failure. Well, this is what I'm going to say. Go out there, fail forward, fail fast, and fail often. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.